from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to the celebration of this daily televised Mass. I am Father Michael Coots. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first are Gladys and Peter Pinto <clears throat> from Mississauga, Ontario, in thanksgiving for their 61st wedding anniversary today for blessings on their children, grandchildren, and for the intentions of their family. The second are Len Gillis and Claudia Smith Gillis from Toronto, Ontario, for prayers and intentions. And the third is Robert Ledwick from New York, USA, for the deceased members of the family of Ledwick and Sarano, and for world peace. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass, and we wish Gladys and Peter Pinto a very happy, first, uh, happy 61st wedding anniversary today. And we are happy to have Gladys Pinto doing our first reading today. As we begin this Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord to forgive us for all the times we have offended God and one another. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And today, since it's the feast of St. Thomas the Apostle, let us glorify God as we say, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may glory in the feast of the blessed Apostle Thomas, so that we may always be sustained by his intercession, and believing may have life. In the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, whom Thomas acknowledged as the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. You are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself at the cornerstone. In Christ, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord.
the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Thomas called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark in the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to Thomas, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Andrei Mirinov is an upcoming Russian artist. He was born in 1975, two years after I was ordained a priest, and only began painting 30 years later. But he has painted the most intriguing picture of Jesus and his encounter with Thomas as we read in our reading today. Our reading of Thomas, of course, we now celebrate it on Divine Mercy Sunday. When I was young, we would call it Doubting Thomas Sunday, the week after Easter. I say the painting of Andrei Mironov is very intriguing because on the first Easter Sunday, Thomas was not there with, his apostles, with the other apostles. And in the picture of Andrei Mironov, of Jesus' encounter with Thomas, Thomas is not in the picture. All we see is a beautiful picture of Jesus looking very sad, looking challengingly, looking at Thomas and looking at you and me standing next to Thomas. Thomas is virtually present in the picture, so typical of our virtual celebrations so very often today. The picture of Andrei Mironov, which I've asked Carl to show to you, is one that is focused entirely on Jesus. In Psalm 22, we read the words, Jesus, the crucified, he was a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone and despised. And yet, if we look at the picture of Andrei Mironov's picture of Jesus and Thomas, we see 
he looks very serene, he looks very royal, he looks very regal. The marks in his hands seem to be a mistake almost of the painter, just two dots. And as for the wound in his side, it's looked like it's made by a red highlighter or a piece of lipstick. Jesus is totally in control. And he looks at Thomas and he looks at me. He does not look with anger or disappointment, but he looks sad. And he has got a sense of understanding of what Thomas was going through. Thomas had thrown his entire lot into journeying with Jesus. When Jesus walked through the streets of Galilee, uh, on the sides of uh, Capernaum and all the other towns, Thomas was there with him. There were times when they were great. There were times of great hardship as well. There were times when there was no place to lay their heads. They slept in the fields. There were times when they were very hungry. And when they went through the fields, they rubbed the corn in their hand, the grains of wheat in their hands, and they had to eat it. They were so hungry. But there were exhilarating times as well when Jesus took loaves and fish and fed 5,000. There were times that were of great success when Jesus told them to go out in twos. And they went out and they exorcised demons, they healed the blind, the deaf, and people listened to their words. This was the life that Thomas had given to Jesus, and he walked with him. And suddenly, everything fell apart. It was a Sabbath during the end of what we would call February, March, and on the very next day, Jesus takes a donkey, rides on it, and leaves Bethany and goes into Jerusalem, and everybody shouts, Hosanna to the son of David. And Thomas must have looked and said, this is what we want. Peter and James and John were fighting about leadership, but he was enthralled with Jesus and the glory that was given to Jesus. And that evening, there was something very strange. As Jesus sat in the house of Simon the leper, a woman that was a sinner came and anointed the feet of Jesus. And Jesus, when that woman was uh, criticized, Jesus said some words that Thomas could not understand. Leave her, because she's anointing my body in preparation for my death. What was it all about? And before the next Sabbath, Jesus would be arrested, crucified, and put to death. And the whole world of Thomas had imploded. Now it was Easter Sunday, and just like the disciples of Emmaus, Thomas was going to have no part to do with the apostles. He was going to go away. He wanted to get a hang of what was going on and what was happening in his own life and what steps he had to take. A week later, he is with the apostles, and they tell him, Jesus has risen. We have seen him. Today, Thomas would say, no way, Jose. Unless I can see with my eyes, I can put my fingers in the holes of the nails, and then I put my hand in his side, I will not believe. And Thomas has given us something that was great. Today, you and I will accept Jesus as the royal king of heaven. We will accept him with all the titles. Jesus was pure, divine, hardly human. But nobody wants to follow only that. We want somebody that will sympathize with us in our sorrow, in our pain, in our anguish, who can rejoice with our joys and happiness. And therefore, Thomas asks for the real credentials, not with the crown on his, hand, on his head, but with the nails in his hand. Thomas had been to throwing his life entirely in the hands of Jesus. As Jesus had cured Lazarus and everybody was leaving and going towards Jesus, they had decided, we are going to kill Jesus, we're going to kill Lazarus as well. And Thomas said, when Jesus said, we are going up to Jerusalem, Thomas said, let's go and die with him. Thomas was not being sarcastic. 
Thomas was not being a daredevil. Thomas was deadly serious. And Jesus knew that, and therefore Jesus loved that. And therefore, in this Mironov picture that we see, we see Jesus understanding Thomas, sad because Thomas would make this decision. But Jesus was always going to give Thomas the upper hand because for, Jesus, for Thomas, Jesus was the heart and the center of his life. Is it the same for you and me? God bless you all. Join me now as we pray together for our church, calling, to, calling us to see Jesus in our brothers and sisters everywhere. We pray to the Lord. Lord for those who call out in their need and for those who respond to these needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for Gladys and Peter Pinto, I hope I've got that correct, uh, on their 61st wedding anniversary. May God give them many more, li many more years of life with their children and grandchildren. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Loving and gracious God, receive these prayers that we make in the name of Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Yes. Through the mystery of this wine and water, may we share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord God, be pleased to accept these gifts that we offer to you with humble and with contrite hearts. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the holy church. We render you, O Lord, the service that is your due, humbly imploring you to keep safe your gifts in us as we honor the confession of the apostle Saint Thomas, and offer you a sacrifice of praise through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you have built your church to stand firm on apostolic foundations to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for ages <coughs> unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out, as we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, bishops across Canada, and this entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, with Saint Thomas, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and wherever you are, share a sign of that peace and friendship.
Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy and under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us and all our dear ones unto life everlasting. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, as we truly receive in this sacrament the body of your only begotten Son, grant that we may recognize him with the Apostle St. Thomas by faith, as our Lord and our God, and proclaim him by our deeds and by our life. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been celebrated. Go now in the peace of Christ. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. 